one of the most unique monstrous races in all of Dungeons and Dragons, Mind Flayers have the distinction of being one of the few canonically psychic races in 5th edition. They're also one of the few that can double as the corporate mascot of a sushi restaurant chain. Looking at Mind Flayers miniatures, we see that Nolzer's offers a 2 pack for 5 bucks, which isn't terrible. But after that, the prices jump up quite a bit, with the prepaint suffering from gross collector's pricing. Today I'll show you how to make your own Mind Flayer miniatures for only pennies. The core miniature we're going to start with is the DC Hero Clicks Dominator. You can buy this guy as a single for somewhere between 60 and 70 cents. Now as always with Hero Clicks, we're going to start by taking them off the clicks base. And the way you can do that is by putting them in a vise and hitting them with a chisel. It's probably the fastest. Couldn't find my vise today for this video, so I just braced it up against a weight, and that works just as well. The next step is we're going to dip them into some acetone. I've already got some set aside just for this. And I put them in, I shake them around a little bit, and I uh, actually dropped all four in here at once. I let them soak for a while, and then I, uh, I pull them up, and then I start hitting them with a toothbrush. Now I've got a, a pair of pliers. You don't want to put your fingers into the acetone. And uh, I dip them in with some needle nose pliers holding onto the base, and then I hit them with a toothbrush. The next step is we've got to take these ears off. They've got these sort of pointy elfin ears. And I do that just with an X-Acto knife. We just shave them off nice and cleanly. It's okay if you leave a little bump there. That doesn't look too bad, but uh, the cleaner the better. And then I'm going to base these guys. And as always on this show with Hero Clicks, I use a little E6000. Nice glob of that on there. And I slam it onto a penny. And then uh, any excess, of course, will clean off with the toothpick and use to base the next miniature. Just rub a little E6000 on that base. Now, there's some paint on those bases, so uh, you want to get that off before you glue them. I just scraped whatever was there to make sure it was really good with my X-Acto. Now, I'm using a nice two-part epoxy. I've got to cut away the old epoxy there that was kind of browning. It had uh, sort of oxygenated. But behind that is nice, good, clean, lighter epoxy, two-part and I'm just gonna slice off a chunk of that, roll it up into tiny little uh, little snakes here. These, of course, are gonna be the face tentacles for our mind flayers. We just need itty bitty ones, and we're just gonna start feeding these guys udon noodles with a single chopstick, just putting it on their face with a toothpick. You don't want to try to put that on with your fingers. It's just a little too difficult, too delicate. But what's nice is the fingerprints left on will give those tentacles a nice texture when you roll them up with your fingers. So that's nice. You don't want them to be too smooth. I don't recommend using a glove uh, while doing this, for example. And I'm just plugging them in different lengths, trying to keep them uh, consistently the same with the thickness, relatively. I'm not much of a sculptor. I think a stronger sculptor could do a better job at this, but you don't have to be much of a sculptor to make these face tentacles and put them on here. You just want to make sure you can seal them out as much as possible. Now the next step is going to be a little PVA glue because we're going to flock the bases and I just do a little PVA glue on the base and then I spread it around with a toothpick. You know, try not to get, you'll see a theme here with typically with glues on this channel. I don't use my fingers or anything. I always try to use some kind of applicator and I've got a bunch of uh, toothpicks laying around. They're nice and cheap. And so I used them for, for this. And then, of course, a quick little dip into the craft sand, shake off the excess. And then we're going to let these guys sit overnight. We're going to let that epoxy cure. We're going to let the PVA cure. And the next morning, bright and early, we'll take them outside. And I'm going to hit them with some gray primer. And I kind of debated what color to prime them with. I, As you see, black would have worked okay because of the base. And then, of course, I could have made their robes black, which is done on a lot of the miniatures, but I decided to go for red and blue as my base coats for the first pass. So you know, of course always starting with a darker color, and then here we are dry brushing you know, lighter blues and reds onto the clothing. With the red I actually went to an orange and then a yellow for highlights, and then of course some gray highlights on the base itself to really bring out the, uh, the, the craft sand, the different textures on it. And then here they are, just sort of based. The next step, of course, once we've done those underlayers, is to hit the skin tone. And I'm using uh, Games Workshop Lich Purple for that, but uh, any purple of this type would work. I don't think you want to go too dark because we're going to highlight with pink. 
So uh, it's really up to you how, how much contrast you want. I think it's a little more natural if the contrast isn't too strong. And here I am just dry brushing some pink onto the top. That's the final painting step, guys. The next work is uh, just a little bit of detailing, picking out the eyes and the sleeves. I think they came out pretty great. Uh, I'm really happy with the results here. Altogether, we're looking at maybe $3 for four miniatures. And that uh, includes you know, the cost of just about everything. Guys, if you've got a friend who's running a D&D game that involves Mind Flayers and they've got kind of a tight budget, why don't you share this video with them? Show them how they can make their own Mind Flayer minis for not much money. As always, you can like us and follow us on Facebook. And come check us out there. It's a great way to stay in touch with the channel. Uh, if you'd like to support this channel, you can always donate to my GoFundMe campaign. And uh, special shout out and thanks for watching. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss future videos. Thank you, everybody.